Welcome back everyone. You are watching the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and you are looking at the inside of something uh, I have never opened up before uh, until today. Uh, I have uh, opened up different um, foot pedals, but this foot pedal, and I'll show you when we put it back together which one it is, this foot pedal is from the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, they, they were still using uh, um, analog or electromechanical pedals and the way they did this, uh, the, you know, you have two types of pedals essentially when you're talking about um, um, analog. You can have what is called a rheostat. Many of your Japanese clones and quite a few sewing machines honestly had those uh, as their uh, as their standard, uh, you know, foot pedals for a long time. This is this was you know pretty common. But the other style of pedal, and many of you are familiar with the uh, carbon pile foot pedal, and if you're not sure you've seen one, you would have seen one with this pedal. Now this is not the only Singer pedal that was used, but even before this came out, Singer was using carbon pile style pedals, and I've covered the differences between these uh, pedal types in another video, but the reason I'm showing you this one is this is also a carbon pile. And I know this because if we zoom in here, you will see there are two little towers. There are two little um, metal pieces here, and they are on top. The carbon piles, the little discs are inside. And when the foot pedal is pushed down on, it pushes here, and it makes contact. And as it gets closer uh, to making contact, the speed goes up, and you get full speed when you get full contact, if that makes sense. Now, uh, what I did down here was to simply, I took some isopropyl 99% alcohol and I, I basically took my um, cotton swab and any dust bunnies I got out and then I took a cotton swab, a clean one with uh, isopropyl and I simply went in and uh, just wiped, there was some carbon here, you don't see it here because I've already cleaned it and so I went in and just, just there wasn't a ton here, in fact I doubt this, this, uh, this pedal got that much use. Um, and then down here below, there's another set of contacts. And if you, you can take maybe just your fingernail and you can pull back, they're spring loaded, don't be too hard on it, pull back. And of course, when you do that, I can do it with, um, gotta have enough fingers here to show you. Let's try this side. Okay, I'm gonna pull back just enough and I can get my alcohol cotton swap right back there. Don't put too much pressure on it. There wasn't a lot on this end. It was mostly up here. And it is basically, um, clean and ready to go. So uh, what's the other main thing to point out is how it goes. It's not always clear how to assemble or disassemble something. So in this case, I'm going to do it in reverse. Uh, I have taken it apart, obviously. Uh, most of your foot pedals have springs. These springs are what gives you the, uh, the adjustability when you, when you put your foot on it. So let's take a look here. I'm going to come over and I'll show you. It's a wonderful design. In fact, I had never taken it apart until today. And it's basically two things. You have pins, and these are kind of like the hinge pins. Think of the hinge on a door. And they are gonna go in the side. And when the pedal's on there, you'll see this, this sort of end right here. And then, uh, to secure it though, it has these two wonderful screws. Now these screws or bolts are for this. They're barrel style. They don't have a head on them, right? There's no overlapping head but they also have this little bullet shape and that allow them, allows them to push in and hold these little hinge pins. Do not lose these because I don't know where I would find them in a, in a uh, hardware store. So, how are we gonna put this back together? It's not tough. I'm gonna go on right here. If you look down in here, there's a place for each of the, the springs to go. So what do we want to do? We're gonna take it and you can see here how this lines up. It's a fairly simple design and uh, there's not really any snapping to do. Sometimes you have to snap some of the newer electronic pedals when you're trying to get them to uh, go back into place. They kind of use pressure, but this one does not. This, this pedal would have cost more to produce than the new electronic ones, but anyway. So let's say, we're gonna, like I say, it's like a, think of it like a clamshell, okay? So I'm gonna be doing this. So don't worry about your springs. The springs will have to seat, but let's start with the hinge and we're just gonna basically lay this right here and as we come over our springs should seat themselves if they don't we'll know because you won't it won't work properly now 
what have I got? Right, you can see me pushing. The springs appear to be in place, but of course we have not secured this pedal lid and it only attaches with on each side with these pins. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this hinge pin in. If it'll go in, will it? Yay, yes it did. Okay, so you know you wiggle it a little bit and make sure it goes in. So this side is in. Okay. I'm going to come over here and do the other side. Now remember this thing's spring loaded, so you got to kind of hold it flat to make sure everything's lined up properly. And I'm pushing on the pin and I'm going to wiggle this a bit. There we go. Now it's in. Now both sides are in, but they're not secure. This is how this is going to work. Obviously, it's going to use the it's going to pivot on these pins and I, my springs seem to be happy, right? But we're not done yet. When I went to disassemble, to open it up, and, and it's so simple that I don't even need to, to, to really uh, redo that, here are two places. These are little rubber feet. You don't touch anything here, but we take our little screws here, these specialty screws, and we're gonna put them down. And I don't know if this is gonna be, it probably won't show up in the video, but I can see with a little bit of light, this pin is coming right, right where it needs to go. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the bullet end or the narrow end and always make sure, I know it sounds obvious, make sure that the head of the screw where you're going to be tightening it is on the top. And I'm simply going to, again, hold this still, hold the clamp still, and then I'm going to put that little screw in there. Get a screwdriver that is the right size. I'll take this one. And I'm simply going to put it in. And I like to tighten screws um, I don't tighten it all the way until I get the other side in so I can kind of adjust their tightness together so nothing gets warped. So it's not fully tightened yet and now I'm going to come over, I don't think it is, and do the other one. What I like about this is that it's not hard to disassemble. And by the way, you say, well, how do I disassemble? You simply do it in the reverse order. You're going to start here. You're going to go and uh, get these out and, it's, it's, and when you do, hold on to this, but it may not come apart. You'll then have to sort of uh, pull out your, your, your side hinge pins here because they, they may not come out when the screws are out. But you obviously cannot use it until all of these things are working together. And make sure I can actually get, get onto the screw. Come over here. I like to do this. It's, uh, if you've ever had to apply a wheel to a car, you know, you tighten your lug nuts, you torque them. A little at a time you go around um, that's probably I'm probably really being overly overly uh, retentive here but <laughs> and again how tight do you do them you keep going until they stop do not you know you don't wrench them tight so it keeps now it just gave me it's now snug I stop I don't keep going it's not it as long as you get them snug you're not going to have a problem or go loose and that is the Kenmore the Kenmore foot pedal Again, uh, it, it's a wonderful pedal, very high quality. Don't drop it like any other foot pedal. But I like it because of its ease of assembly, right? Or disassembly in this case. Why? Because just like Singer, once upon a time, Sears and Roebuck and Company, not only did they sell products with great guarantees, like some of the department stores did, but Sears, because they sold so many other types of mechanical things for the home, you know, outdoor yard equipment and so forth, they had their own repair centers. Now, for big appliances, they would come to your home, of course, but for things like lawnmowers and, uh, oh God, all the things they sold, all they would, you would bring it to the repair center. Um, the one in my hometown had one right behind the, uh, the main store, and you would take it in and get it repaired, either under warranty or even after. Can you believe that? Anyway, just wanted you to see this. This is, uh, again, um, Sears, just like Singer wanted their repair people to be efficient and productive as much as possible so they would tell the manufacturers uh, Singer did this themselves they were the manufacturer but because Kenmore was made by some manufacturer and Sears purchased it <clears throat> Sears would simply say make this repairable for our people and they did how cool is that anyway the Kenmore this particular uh, foot pedal is ready to go it's been cleaned it's been that's really all I had to do to it in great shape but I wanted to show you how to disassemble it first time I've ever needed to take one apart and I did thanks for watching everyone we will see you in the next video